my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I'm delivering another Dabi story for you. I hope you enjoy it. But before we go right into it, I would like to ask you once again for some financial support. Basically, I have a Patreon and a merch store. Both links are down in the description. It would be nice if you could donate something or buy something off of the merch store. Doesn't matter what you do, you would be supporting me directly. However, if you'd like to support me more indirectly, you can simply watch this video until the end, like or dislike it, and comment something down below. And especially, share it around. Sharing around is actually the most important step of this. And if you're new here, please consider hitting the bell icon should you think I'm worth subscribing. So you can always get updated whenever I upload something. And of course, to join my beautiful, darling doll army. Now, please enjoy the show. You had been wandering, floating, seeing the world through the eyes of something weightless, your mind slowly forgetting your past, your name, your family your friends. You try to focus on what was real and what wasn't, chased by the echoes of what was. That was until you saw her, a vessel perfectly suited for you. She was pretty, she was small, she was beautiful. You didn't remember why you wanted to be beautiful. But something urged you to choose an attractive body over a useful one. However, this one was seemingly both. You had watched her for a while now, despite your constant memory loss, making you wonder for whomever you wanted to look pretty for. Would they like it? If not, you were about to ruin the life of a perfectly healthy young woman. You tilted on your side as you watched her train through a window. Her quirk was based around electricity or energy. It allowed her to float, gracefully. You wondered how long it would take you to learn this. She didn't have many friends, but many admirers. This might become a problem, but it wasn't the first time you have chosen a body of a popular person. All you really needed was a change of clothes, colored contacts, and a new hair color. Yes, you imagined all of it. Your perfect new body. Hopefully this one would last longer. You would certainly take good care of her. That's what you silently promised yourself. Her and the mysterious feeling that wanted you to take a pretty vessel. Carelessly, you floated over the girl's dorm. You had lived like this for a very long time. This was your quirk. A mutation. It was scary the first few times around, yes, but once you had accepted it, it had become easier. But that didn't change how wrong it was. Your ethereal body would suck out the energy of anything you inhabited to the point where the body would quickly expire and turn to dust. This technically meant that you could live eternally if it wasn't for your memory loss. The more time you spent outside a vessel, the more memories you would forget. A natural decay. If you would take too long choosing a body, you certainly would forget how to move, to see, to think. And then you would join the clouds in the sky as nothing but mist, caught in an everlasting dream of nothingness. You entered the girl's bedroom through a crack in her window and nestled under her bed. And there you waited. The obvious metaphor of the monster under her bed escaped your grasp. And there you waited and let your mind wander. You wanted to remember why all of this was necessary this time. 
The sun had begun to set when you finally saw a vision. A forest. Not remembering its surroundings, it was simply floating on a cloud. Inside this forest stood a cabin. Voices were coming from it. Sweet noises. Familiar voices. Oh, how much you wanted to enter it. But before that you needed to remember where you were and who you were to these people. And who you would become in the next few hours. The door to the girl's room opened, and what you saw filled you with warmth. It was the girl and her two friends, a strong, dreamy-looking young lad, and a sad little elven-looking worm with pretty hair. If it wasn't a female vessel you desired, you would have taken the little worm. His quirk allowed him to gain abilities through consumption. Him and the girl were just perfect. Just imagining being able to be them for more than a year, thanks to their quirks, made you feel at ease. The three friends were talking about another girl. A friend... A friend. Maybe a peer. But once the girl's quirk came up, your ethereal heart fluttered. The girl's quirk sounded perfect for your intention of survival. Basically, it allowed her to rewind people. Like a living time machine. This place you had found was so wonderful. Once you had the body of this bubbly, floating girl, you were certain to burn this place into your memory. It was like looking at a wonderful meal, but only able to choose one thing. Finally, the boys left. You watched the girl walk around her room, see how she acted all alone. She was so pretty. You wanted her body. You needed her body. But you also needed to wait. Until... Until... Click. The lights in the girl's room turned off, and you heard creaking above you and then silence. Slowly, gently, you floated upwards. Now seeing this girl in full view up close for the first time, she was cuddling with a teddy bear while mumbling. You had seen the crown in her room before. She had won a beauty pageant. She deserved it. She was pretty and soon you would be as pretty as her. And now your thoughts were filled with hunger. But you wanted to be patient. You could live in her for years, most likely. And because of that, you wanted to grant her mercy. The mercy of sleep. The only mercy you could grant this perfect little girl. Once her eyes began to move under her eyelids, it was time. Your misty form embraced her sleeping body, allowing her to slowly inhale you. You were glad she was asleep. If you would have to force yourself down her body, she would fight you, scream and bite, and your heart simply could not take that. The procedure only took a moment. There was no fighting back, and then the girl was no more. You told yourself over and over that the people you subsumed were not really dead. But the more often you did it, the more you realized that outside of a few select memories of theirs, there was less than nothing left of who they once were. You opened your eyes feeling rejuvenated. For a moment you hugged the girl's teddy bear closely. I'm sorry, little one, you said quietly. Your new voice was so gentle. But your owner has to go on an adventure. You looked at the teddy bear misty-eyed. Are you sure, Mr. Bear? You kissed the stuffed toy on the forehead. Thank you. 
The bear would stay put and tell the girl's friends that, wherever she was, that she was happy. Gently you stood up on your feet, and then covered up the teddy bear up to its head. Good night. I'll be thinking of you, Mr. Bear. You tapped your chin and thought. Oh, I apologize, you said to the bear. Good night. I'll be thinking of you, Mr. Fred. The name fitted the bear. Then you walked into the girl's bathroom, admiring your new form in her mirror. You liked slender bodies like hers. Then you gently touched the girl's toothbrush. Dry. That wouldn't do. Who doesn't brush their teeth before going to bed? Following through with your promise of taking good care of her body, you began brushing your teeth. You giggled once the toothpaste-covered brush touched your teeth. She liked strawberry toothpaste. You preferred fruity toothpastes yourself. It was a shame you could only get those in the children's aisle of grocery stores. Once you were done brushing, you took a nice warm shower and changed into more comfortable clothes. Then you began searching for the girl's personal belongings. You needed money. A lot of money. All of it. Oh, what's that? You exclaimed when a pink brick fell into your hands. And the giggle escaped you. It was the girl's phone. You gave it to a tense at opening, before the teddy bear told you the password. Thank you, Freddy. Uh, c can I call you Freddy? You blinked. Thank you, Freddy. After unlocking the phone, you searched for the girl's and now technically your messages. Until you just quickly turned it off, feeling guilty over what you did. She really was a good person. You sat down next to her bed. Huh? What was it? You looked to your left. There laid a little All Might action figure. Oh, hey, All Might. You said with a smile. No, no, I'm fine, just feeling a little sad. You tilted your head. Yes, All Might, the forest, you're right. Maybe there I remember the last time I had a body. You patted the action figure on the head. Tell Freddy I'm going now. I don't want him to see him all sad when I'm leaving. Joyfully, you clapped your hands. Thanks, you, Mr. All Might. Quickly now, with newfound determination, you collected the essentials. The girl had snacks stored in her nightstand with a few bottles of a pink soda. Then you grabbed the girl's wallet and the backpack you had stuffed the snacks in before throwing away her ID and student card. Then putting all the money you could find into her wallet. It didn't feel like it was enough. Huh? What was that, Mr. All Might? You look back at the action figure. Ah, yes. <clears throat> Bye, Mr. All Might. You grinned and left the room. Leaving the building wasn't hard. The girl you had chosen was a third year of this neat little high school. And thankfully, third years didn't have a curfew. Something that might change after tonight. You used the girl's quirk to gently float over the school's protective walls, realizing that flying probably was easier than expected. And then you were free. Before turning away, however, you focused as hard as possible on the school building. This body was sure to fall apart at some point, and the school had powerful quirk users, which would allow you to gain new vessels vast and easy. After thoroughly concentrating and a mild headache, you continued walking into the opposite direction of the large building. You traversed the city without much hassle. In fact, the compliments from the various drunks about your looks were quite enjoyable and helped your ego. Sadly, however, they didn't help you trigger any hidden memories. You played with the idea to allow yourself be taken by them, just so in the morning after you could steal from them. 
that that feeling in your gut told you to avoid men, at least for now. You aimlessly walked throughout the city until the sky turned into an uncomfortable twilight. It was getting morning. Wanting to see the sunrise, you decided to race into the factory district with all its abandoned skyscrapers. The sun was almost over the horizon when you arrived. Without much thought, you chased into the first one that was open, past obscene graffitis. And with a heavy beating heart, you chased up stairwell after stairwell. And finally, you opened the door leading to the roof. Except, it wasn't the morning sun that greeted you. It was still the same roof, but the sky above you was dark. And it was raining. Two silhouettes were standing at the railing. Intrigued, you walked towards them, hearing distant voices, desperate voices, and familiar ones. Suddenly, one of the shadowy figures fell onto its knees. Oh no, it's hurt! You exclaimed as you stepped forward. But you were too late. The kneeling figure faded away. I, I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner, Darby! You cried out, now falling on your knees yourself. Tears streaming down your face. Who was Darby? You thought as the memory faded. This building. This memory. Instinctively, you must have chosen this building. This Darby must be the reason as to why you wanted to remember so badly. You had forgotten the sunrise completely and wandered over to the spot where your old self had vanished. Leaning against the railing, looking out into the city below you, you needed to find him. With your head hung low, you made your way back down. Your feet beginning to hurt from your endless walking. You spent the entire day worried sickly about your vision. Worrying if this Dobby character even remembered you. Who he was. If he was handsome. And how he had treated you. Clearly you cared enough about him to the point where you wanted to look pretty for him. Without realizing it, you found yourself in the subway of Camino Ward. It was still too early to be ram-packed with people. So you decided to spend these last few peaceful moments with buying a candy bar at a vending machine. Seeing your reflection in the machine glass suddenly made you feel very aware of not only the life you had taken to be here now, but also the life you had lost when you faded into nothingness the last time. Strangely, however, it didn't make you feel sad, nor happy. Just very, very empty. You wondered. What would Freddy say in this moment? And did he still think you were his original owner? And what did All Might tell him to cheer him up when you realized you wouldn't come back? Pushing the thoughts aside, you opened the wrapper of the candy bar. And then you growled. You had forgotten the candy bars in your backpack. With a scowl, you ate the white chocolatey treat as you walked back to the surface. Just when you had taken your last bite, you remembered the forest floating on clouds. The clouds probably were just in your imagination, but that didn't change the fact that you hoped there was a floating forest island somewhere in the world. You didn't even need to see it, just knowing it existed would be enough. You giggled when you thought about flying pigs living on it. And then your phone rang and you pulled it out. For a moment you thought of answering it, then realizing that that was the worst that you had had all day, and the day had just started. 
but the loud cheerful tone would certainly make people uncomfortable, as you felt right now. So you just swiped away. Wait. Phone. You thought. As numbers seemingly appeared in front of you. You bit your leap and quickly rushed forward into a nearby park. The numbers? What do they mean? You repeated in your head. If you could remember any number of your past life, you could get a connection to the people you were looking for. While the numbers kept floating around your head, whenever they stayed the same digit, for more than a few seconds, you clicked it into your phone. The first attempt. Nothing. And on a second attempt, a deep male voice shouted out, Who's there, Ribbit? And you answered with, Hello, is this Darby? No, this is the Asui residence. You got the wrong number, Ribbit, Ribbit. Oh, okay. Sorry, Magical Frog. Bye. You said before hanging up. The fourth number you tried worked as well. Hello. Another male voice. Hello. You answered, followed by silence. Who's there? Groaned the voice. It's me. Look, pal, the last person to pull this prank on me was my girlfriend and she's dead. So tell me where the fuck you are so I can put you on a pyre. How did you even get this number, asshole? You tilted your head, ignoring his loud mouth. Are you Darby? Silence. Are you Darby? You repeated after a while. I... What? There was something in his voice. Something that only slowly woke up. Do you know a Darby? I'd like to meet him. Yes, I'm Darby. He stuttered. Cool, you explained happily. I think we were a couple once, you said with a giggle. Who is that Darby? You heard a female voice in the background. Are you cheating on me? You asked with a smile. No, no, that, that's just Toga. You could hear fighting coming from the phone speaker. And then you heard the girl again. Tabby is currently unavailable. He is... The girl Toga went quiet for a second. He's crying and saying your name over and over again. Oh. You answered. Anyways, if it's really you, our location hasn't changed. What location? Toga gave a quick chuckle. <laughs> our base, silly! You shuddered in anticipation. Base? Was I part of a cult? I love cults, especially the ones that drink funny-tasting Kool-Aid. Toga laughed loudly. <laughs> no, it's not a cult, it's a family. A metaphorical one. You smiled happily. Are you smiling? Asked Toga. And you nodded. I'm guessing you nodded. She giggled. I know you too well. Okay, the base is still in the forest of the Tatooine district. Where are you? You looked around yourself. A park? Silence. Then go from the park to the Tatooine district. And then find the forest. It's at the city's boundaries. Toga, wait. You heard the voice of Darby. Before you hang up, tell her I love her and that I thought about her every night. Again there was shuffling. Darby says he wants to take your new body's virginity really, really badly. Toga! Shouted Darby. And then the line cut. Absent-mindedly, you began walking, quietly telling your feet to go to the Tatooine district. It took you almost the entire day. Out of your own obliviousness, you had forbidden yourself to eat, but mostly it was because of the lack of money. Everything was just 
so expensive. You didn't dare to buy anything. Afraid you would see something you really, really like by then, having wasted your money. The growling tummy, you arrived at the outskirts of a rural forest. Houses half hazardly scattered around. It was a stark contrast to the city you walked around in just mere minutes ago. And you only realized the dumb mistake you were making, thoughtlessly walking into a dark, creepy forest while the sun was setting, when you were hopelessly lost. Despite that, your imagination took over. The image of the cozy cabin was floating inside your head. And you had been drooling with anticipation ever since. And your imagination turned the large forest into a dungeon filled with danger. And the cottage, as the treasure chest filled with the friends of your last life, was in the middle of it. And the ever-increasing onslaught of orcs and goblins seemingly guided you to safety. You walked through dark passages and carefully crawled over dangerous bridges that were hung over pools of acid right below you, until you reached a large wooden door. Surely your treasure would be behind it. With a surprised squeak, you saw a great wooden treasure chest with a golden ornaments behind the door, a tiny door leading to the inside of it. But in front of the chests stood a mean-looking orc, his head shaven, eyes white as snow. His bald head was covered in white war paint, and his toned abs were blackened by charcoal. But instead of attacking you, he tilted his head upon seeing you. We want you, we said the orc. I'm here to meet my friends, you said with an innocent smile. I'm Gorog Gronor, keeper of the treasure. What makes you think you can enter? I asked you nicely, you replied. The grotesque orc scratched the back of his head dumbfoundedly. Uh, can I please go into the chest to meet my friends and prince? I never met such a nice adventurer said the orc before opening the door for you. And as soon as you took your first step into the chest, the wonderful image turned back to reality. You looked to your right. There stood Twice. I remember you. You're Twice! Where did Gorak go? You asked the masked man. Look, Dolly, I don't even know who you are. Actually, I know who you are! I missed you so much! He squealed. And you shrugged. Maybe the old orc had something else to do. Humming happily, you waltzed into the large living room of the abandoned house the League of Villains called its home. Where's Darby? You asked into the almost empty room. With the exception of Twice and a large shadowy figure behind a bar, the room was pretty much empty. Who are you? Asked the shadowy figure with a perplexed tone. I'm me, you answered with a cheerful grin. The man sighed. <sighs> Darby is in his room, I shall summon him. So Darby was a demon, you thought. And your grin widened. Your past boyfriend was a demon. You really were a lucky girl. The purple mist man vanished behind a door. She's what? You heard a familiar voice shout, and the door swung open. A man with a patchwork body and face rushed into the room. He was wearing an open leather jacket with nothing under it and black sweatpants. His face was overjoyed. Is, is it really you? He asked. I think it's me, you answered with a giggle. With three long steps, he was right in your face. Up close, he was so much bigger than you. You barely reached his shoulders. And then, you felt two arms embrace you. And your face squeezed tightly against his chest. I missed you so much. 
he said as tears ran down his face. How much do you remember? Dew shrugged. Do doesn't matter, he sniffled. Just better. I love you. I still love you. He was getting hysteric. I think... You began. I think I love you too. The next morning you sat with Toga at the breakfast table. She was happily stuffing her face with the candy bars you had forgotten in your backpack. When Darby entered the room. Slightly burnt newspaper in hand. Hey. He asked with a cocky smile. And you answered with a happy grin. Guess what? What? Are we getting a unicorn? You asked and Toga squeaked. Are we? Shouted the blonde. Dubby sighed. No, but... He opened the newspaper. There was an image of you with the words missing under it. Guess we gotta change your face up a bit. Chuckled Darby. And you groaned. Freddy was supposed to tell them that I'm fine. You pouted. Who's Freddy? Asked Darby. <laughs> Who cares? You got your pixie back. <laughs> Left Toga with a white grin.